John Mark Dugan here in Moscow, Russia. I am here with the beautiful uh, Malena Subatina, and of course, the amazing translator, Masha. She has such an interesting story to tell, and we're going to get into it now. So, Malena, what is your background? Malena, скажите чуть-чуть о себе. I'm a singer, I'm a public figure, I'm a volunteer. I am a little bit of everything and of quite a lot. But where are you from? Like, where were you born? Where did you grow up? I was born in Mariupol. I lived there for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to Odessa, where I became a singer, and I went there to study, I got married, divorced, and later on I had to leave Odessa because the 2nd May of 2014 happened. You know that people were burned on that day, I was there, I was there on the Kulikov field on the 10th of April 2014, it was my concert, it was the celebration of freeing Odessa from fascists. After that I was helping people, and because I was doing that I had to eventually flee, although I was a very a political person. I didn't want to deal with poli politics at all. It was not interesting to me. I was working with children. I was taking part in different TV shows as a singer. And then I was the one to have this concert on Kulikov field. And that's how it started. So after that, in 2014, I had to flee to Moscow, and since 2014, I live in Moscow. So it's my ninth year here. Okay, okay. Um, you said they were burning people in Odessa. Why? And who? I know that the investigation is still not happening, but we know everybody who took part in it. I think that time will come when it will be released, when it will become clear for everyone, when people will be talking about it. Although people keep talking about it, there are even movies made uh, about it. And these documentaries and these people must be accountable for these murders of simple civilian people, of simple inhabitants of Odessa. Unbelievable. So you had to flee Odessa. Why did you have to flee Odessa? Расскажите еще, пожалуйста, почему конкретно вам пришлось бежать из Одессы? There was a danger that I will be requested to come to SBU and uh, I will never leave the premises, although there was like a somewhat double understanding that on one hand they could let me go and then I start to cooperate with them. And the other thing, because I didn't know what SBU was back then, I didn't know where they were, and I totally didn't want to meet them. And the second situation was I had to flee, because I was hiding people at my home. Well, they were at my home. My guests, and it was from my home that they went uh, away, and after that they were captured. And this is how I was found, how my name was known. Who are you hiding in your home? People who were on Kulikov field that were hunted, basically. I think that 
These are the people who were standing for their position. They didn't do anything wrong other than that. They didn't kill anybody. They didn't do anything for which they could be seized and destroyed. Well, we are seeing the same thing now. The same thing that is happening now. They're just killing civilians who did nothing wrong, who just have a certain position in regards to the Russian Federation. It sounds... Um Sounds crazy. It, it sounds like something from a horror movie. Frankly, it sounds like something that you would read about Nazi Germany. Where people who were on the wrong side of the government had to hide and flee from their government. Is this how you saw it back then? То есть вы именно так это видели тогда? Что касается меня, as for me personally, I am an I was an apolitical person. I didn't understand anything about it. When I took part in the show in 2014, that was like Battle of Choirs show. Alexander Safina was my trainer. It's quite he's quite famous. So, I came to Odessa, this is when it was beginning, the Maidan has already happened, I saw it beginning back in Kiev on this battle of choirs. I can tell you a little bit about it if you like. Sure. When we were at this show, people who were surrounding us, and I think that the Battle of Choirs from the beginning was for Maidan. Because the songs that we were preparing were like Mama Maria. We were supposed to sing that song, but at one night we were all woken up and that we should urgently learn another song that we had to perform with on the next day. So we were like waking up, what's going on? And we were told, you're going to sing a song by Vakarchuk. It means, it means, raise my darling. And back then we didn't really understand because this, uh, this is a very different song. And the words there are raise my darling. Like, go ahead. So it's like a uh, call for action. So we, it's 120 people of, in a choir. We learned the song. You had to learn the words, you had to dance, you have to do it in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. so, so, we didn't understand clearly what was happening, but back then I was feeling that something was seriously off. Of course, I couldn't say much, because I didn't have this understanding just yet. So we sang the song, everything was nice, almost wonderful, that's a show, somewhere you have some intrigues, somewhere you have some special footage. And at one point, when Maidan already started, it was just beginning. Ruslana, who is a singer, she won Eurovision. She was a trainer for the team from Lvov. And she was the one who actually started that Maidan. So everyone was called to Maidan, all the teams. And it was told, go to Maidan, you can sing there, you can have all this communication there, it's all good, it's all normal. The trust was that in 2004, in 2004, in Ukraine there was this orange revolution, and it was without any fighting, it was with flowers, with flags, it was all nice, everybody stayed alive, you know, everything was fine. That was in 2004. 
Люди, которые so people who went through it, думали, they were thinking that in 2014 it will be something similar. So we were lied to. When I came into the room, and I have witnesses who saw this, I told everyone, girls, it's a war. It's gonna be a war. Milena was the only one who didn't go to Maidan. Because she felt that that's not something she wants to do and that she's not going. And when she was watching them go into the Maidan, Ruslana came up to Milena and said, let's go, let's PR ourselves on Maidan. So now she just repeated that in Russian, let's go and PR ourselves on Maidan. And Milena said, no, not going, this is not my thing. And after that, they were never showing her on TV in Ukraine. Unbelievable. So she was understanding already. After the show, she went to Maidan. Like, I'll go have a look what's going on. Just on her own. So she came there and she saw people who were in absolutely crazy state. Like, people who were arguing with each other. And was like fighting with each other. And uh, she understood, and th those were people from churches, so they were like believers, and she understood that they were like parts of the Protestant churches, yeah. and again, to sum it up, uh, to say something important, I have nothing against religion, I am, I, I love God, I'm afraid of God, and I think I go with God, and each step I take, I kind of connect with God, but at that point, at that point, I saw people who are in a total mess between each other, who have a total mess between each other. And I understood that they are motivated people who came from churches and who are there on Maidan. And then the picture became much clearer. I told, she told many people that this is a real trouble, that America has been preparing us for a very long time, for that very day, and that church was used for that. The church of Ukraine was used for that. There were many people who went to churches, to Protestant churches, and there was serious manipulation of people done to them. There was motivation. I mean, motivation is, is, is a good thing. It's the right thing to motivate people to find for the, to help them find their purpose, to find, help them understand themselves as personalities. But sheep have their own purpose, mm -hmm. and not many are capable of thinking a little more. I'm not judging anyone, I'm not against anyone, but today what we have now proves that I was right. They were manipulated, they were set a task, and because for years they were taught to be obedient, they obediently followed. And they also probably were thinking that nothing's gonna happen. And then there was a work with the whole Ukraine, and it led to what we see now. We have lost time. We have lost a lot of time, unfortunately. Beginning of the special military operation, uh, Mariupol fighting of Azov and the Ukrainian military was going on now. Yes? It is true. And there is something I would like to add. Mm -hmm, please. There was a guy in Mariupol. He was my, like, like my brother, like a brother to me. 
We were communicating a lot. And we talked about the situation that can possibly happen in Mariupol in a very near future. And when I told him, Alyosha, now the Russians and is gonna uh, gonna come, you know, and Mariupol is there, and he said, Milena, stay out of there, don't write anything anywhere. Keep singing, keep showing pictures on Facebook, do whatever you're doing on Instagram, wherever, and that's it, stay out. And Milena said, Alyosha, you know that Russians always win. And he said, if Russians come, we are prepared. And uh, he was uh, good. He had good friends from from Azov, real friends with people from Azov. So he knew all situation, which was prior. And he said to Milena, "We shall drop this town as a house of cards down." We shall destroy all the people, but we will not surrender any single person and we will not surrender the town. And then she said, Alyosha, you cannot do it like this. You cannot do it. Be afraid of God. You cannot do it like this. So he became nervous. He became really nervous and he started to say that just like keep singing, stay out. You'll see we're going to win, but we're not going to surrender Mariupol. But if we have to, we'll destroy it, but we won't surrender it. And uh, Milena is very happy that they failed. Yes, 80% of Mariupol is destroyed. I know many stories that were told to me by my people with whom I grew up, who I know personally. And I know many stories. And I have lots of videos of people telling those stories, people who trust me, because it is my town. It's my people. And today, with all my heart, I am trying to help. I go there, go to Mariupol, go to Moscow. I make arrangements, and now me, we in Moscow help the city to raise back. Mm. We were actually in Mariupol uh, our last time uh, about a month ago, and we we saw the great work that you're doing. Месяц назад даже меньше мы были в Мариуполе и видели огромную работу, которую вы делаете. Майкл, привет, hello. Джон, Мариуполь, да, ура, ура, да, вот помощь, вот приехали ребята. And um, uh, you had your rooms of a huge amount of humanitarian stuff, organized, lists of specific items that need to go to specific people. It was absolutely, I was amazed. And when I spoke to you in Moscow, um, comparing that to how I saw you in Mariupol, I was just incredibly impressed. So, yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. And, and guys, we were we were going through these neighborhoods where these old ladies were shot at. In fact, you can see back in a couple of videos of these ladies telling us their stories. But Milena is responsible for them getting all of the stuff that they were wearing. I am a person who is a conductor. I bring stuff to Mariupol, and this stuff, these things, they are collected in Moscow. People in Moscow love Mariupol. They really care. They really sympathize. And they send these things to also send their love and care and their attention. And to say that they are, they love Mariupol and they love Mariupol people and they are willing to help. And today we are 
collecting these gifts for the children for the new year. It's for our little kids in Mariupol. And John, you take part in it as well. Thank you very much for that. Well, I saw you there. When you came there, I saw how people accepted you. We have really kind and sincere people, and you saw it yourself. And uh, just because you are from the U.S., you know, people didn't stop liking you. And uh, it shows the attitude of people that they can forgive, that they can love, and that they can accept, even in the situation which is like the most horrific that you can yeah. imagine. They can accept people like you. Yeah. It's very important. It is the love that they show through you, the love to the Americans. They show through you because they show how simple people, normal people suffer because of government's decisions. These decisions are not supported by people. The governments decide on their own, and people live on their own. And unfortunately, it's people who are suffering now and not the governments. Just like the people in the U.S., I'm sure, the most of them, they are also kind of suffering because their government started this war in Ukraine. And Ukraine allowed this war to happen because it has sold everything that they had in Ukraine. And it is also another truth that we must talk about. Why this war happened. Okay, so why did it happen? First of all, it's it was in the making for a very long time. Mm -hmm. They were really preparing. Like I said, the beginning was in churches. Again, nothing against churches, but the church itself, against God, against faith, against Bible. I have nothing against that. But there are things that were there, that were thought through there. You have to praise the government of the U.S. Mm -hmm. for their patience and labor and long waiting for the right time to strike. Mm -hmm. So they did that. They did that strike. They pushed two peoples, two peoples, two strong nations, Slavic nations, against each other. Yeah. They managed. Yeah. And today, mm -hmm. these two nations, very strong nations, are fighting each other. Mm -hmm. And they are equally strong. And they are equally strong mentally. We think in the same way. And it's complicated. It's very complicated. This was programmed long ago. And I want people to hear. And I want people of Ukraine to hear. That it's not their fault. They must open their hearts and finally see this situation, see what's happening. Mothers are losing their children now. Children are losing their fathers and mothers. From both sides, people who lived together, who were brothers and sisters, who share parents, grandparents, now are on two opposite sides, fighting each other. Why? Who told them to do so? Why do we? Why did we allow this to happen? Why? Why to destroy towns? To kill our beloved ones? For what purpose? We, the simple people. Why do we need that shit? Who needs that? We don't. If government needs that, let them fight together with each other. 
Why do we die? Why do we lose our families? We lose what we have created for years and we lose it in one second, just like that. Now all these old people are without homes. Now there are children who are dead. Now there are people who lost families. It's the cry throughout the whole world. Who takes this sin upon themselves? It's a huge sin. So what are your plans now? Are you going back to Mariupol? Какой теперь план? Ехать назад в Мариуполь? План, да, создавать Мариуполь. The plan is to recreate Мариуполь. Я хочу, чтобы Мариуполь стал красивым. I want Мариуполь to become beautiful. Мы все хотим Мариупольцев. We all want, we all people. We want guests to come to our town. We want them to see. Сегодня много плача. Today there are a lot of tears. But just like people who are in Mariupol now, we can't cry all the time. We can't suffer all the time. So we are trying to raise the level of life. We are trying to somehow creatively approach everything. Because if we only cry, you're not going to build anything. Yeah. But if you approach with forgiveness and with understanding that, yes, it did happen, but you have to go on, you have to have children, you have to love, to create, then we are the ones to do that. So these are the plans for the future, to create, to love, to get married. I'm going to get married. She's going to get married. So let's find a husband for Milena. Ну, и за кого замуж? Я подумаю. I'm thinking about it. За лучшего. The best. I'll pick the best. Джон у нас не женатый. Джон. Поле, пожалуйста. Shall we draw the heart? So, anyways. Uh, and by the way, guys, not only is she strong and smart and absolutely beautiful, uh, but she's a very talented singer I as well. What type of music do you sing? Какую музыку поете? Опера. It's opera. Попса. It's also pop music. Mm -hmm. And it's rock music. I love rock music. I also love jazz. And ethnic music. And spiritual music as well. Even more than everything that I just named. Because when you spiritually grow, when you are calm in your spirit, when you are in that spiritual space, you're not afraid of anything. You just go on and you do things and you stand in front of God and you're clean. You're open and you're ready for certain actions. When you see and feel and understand and so you go in that flow. Nice. Well, I look forward to your next performance. It's going to be in Mariupol, yes? Yeah, I was also performing on the referendum. We made a flash mob. Также я пела на Единство России. Я пела свою песню. Это песня пророческая получилась. Моя песня. И она называется "Время перемен". Возрождение. Просто вот так вот случилось. И все, что там в этой песне поется, все, что говорится в этой песне, это именно о том, что вот дети, подними руки, начинай новую жизнь, 
и ветер перемен, он врывается в твое окно. Пришло время перемен. Возрождайся. Несколько месяцев назад Джон был в Мариуполе. And the children were in some small park in a square, singing and dancing in front of their bombed schoolyard. In front of their bomb school. And they were incredibly happy and optimistic. So. Yeah. It's good. When children smile, it's good. When they have lived through this pain, when they find strength within themselves, to continue to live, no matter what they saw, regardless, even though they lost their parents, many of them, many parents lost their children, They have the right to live. They have the right to be creative. They have the right to smile. And they have the right to all the blessings of God that are there for them. That's why they were born. What happened is horrible. It's horrible. It's horrific. It's wrong, but we have to continue to live. And all of us, we cannot just walk with our heads down. We have to raise our heads and to help others to raise their heads. We were born for that, to help each other and to connect with each other. Malena, thank you so much for letting me interview you. And we will see you in just a few weeks to pass out Christmas toys and presents um, with you. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Thank you, John. Всегда, пожалуйста.